this is Doug. This episode, we turn a glue bomb into something gorgeous. You know, I had such a good time working on slot cars in the past few series. Thought I'd take on one more. This one, though, is <laughs> not too attractive. This is what you would call a glue bomb. This is a 1965 Cox Slot car, the best-selling Cox Slot car of all time. This is the Chaparral 2A. It's a car that was designed by Jim Hall and is one of my favorites because, well, people kind of made fun of Jim when he pulled his fiberglass car out of the pits and it went on to thoroughly dominate the competition in Sebring of 1965 during a torrential downpour. The management of a hobby company called Cox knew a good thing when they saw it, and they signed a contract with Jim Hall to do a terrific version of his car. The slot cars made by Cox during 1965 to, say, 1970 were among the best that were made, and collectors kind of realize it at this point because the prices are steadily going up on these. Well, I saw this example of a Cox slot car on eBay for a very low price, and I thought, well... You know, I'm up for a challenge. We're going to see if we can bring this thing back to become something beautiful. Because <laughs> right now, it's all covered with glue. And we're going to, in the second episode, work at removing the parts so we can do a proper restoration of this car. In this first episode, we're going to work on how do you take apart a cock slot car properly. This car has seen its action in the past. Uh, take a look here. You can see that the bottom screw boss has been broken off and re-glued, which is fine, except they re-glued it a little bit off center. So we're gonna have to cut it off, reposition it, so the chassis will be right in the center again. I'm using a jeweler's screwdriver to fit in that tiny little hole, which works great to get that front screw out, which is kind of a difficult thing with a large one. And now we go to look at the wiring. Back in the day, they didn't have zip ties. Instead, they just used whatever they had. These are the little wires that held Wonder Bread closed. Yeah, this car is what we would call a rust bucket. We're going to try to get it to look like this chassis. This one was also in pretty bad shape. Not quite as bad as the one we're going to be working on. Some restorers use bead blasting to clean off their chassis. Uh, I take a little more elbow grease with my version. I use steel wool and a lot of rubbing. It takes about 45 minutes to clean these off. I get kind of a patina that I enjoy, and then I spray it with a clear coat. These beautiful magnesium wheels are one reason why these Cox slot cars from the 60s can be made into beautiful static models. As we cut off these wire ties, you see, we're going to have a little bit of problem getting some of these parts off just because of the advanced state of oxidizing here. After working on a few of these vintage Cox cars, I've found out that some of the parts just do not want to come off. Uh, there's a way around that for some of the parts. Some of the other ones you just leave in place. This 5mm socket is going to be very handy to take off these acorn nuts. Now be careful with these because these things are rare. And if you can find them on eBay, they're usually really expensive. So put them in a nice little container like I have here. Here you can see a close-up. They're really beautiful little specimens. So treat them like gold. You know, I see some very expensive cars that have been restored that don't have these acorn nuts on them. They just have hex nuts. So I feel pretty fortunate here. But in other aspects, not so much. Here you can see I do have the wide assortment of bearings that are all there. These are the little chassis bearings that fit on the back side. This is where the gears are on the rear wheels. I try to be real cautious with all the set screws because you can give those up pretty easily to the carpet people. This is a Genuine Cox 48 tooth gear. We make sure that I put the set screw back in before I put it into the parts bin. These rear wheels always seem to be totally shot. And I think the reason is they are really tight on the wheels. 50 years of time can really wreak havoc to these plastics. I don't believe these are rubber. I think these were urethane. You can see very closely here, this was a Firestone tire. Now listen to what happens when you squeeze it. <laughs> There's something oddly pleasing about that sound. So even though they're 50, 
Into the trash bin they go. Now let's work on getting the motor out. It's actually very simple if you use a jewelry screwdriver. This little brass part can be shined up and looks beautiful. And look at the motor. I always loved these Cox motors. I believe this is a 36D size. The Cox label on there is very coveted by collectors. So I'm really glad that part made the trip. And I'm also really glad to have this one because this is also marked as a Cox part. This is the guide flag. And it was really nice how they had their brushes. They had little holes and the mounting was really a lot easier on Cox slot cars than many others. If you go to buy these slot cars on eBay or swap meets, you got to really look them over to make sure that the original parts are there. Remember, one of the really big things about this hobby was the ability to take your cars apart and be able to hop them up. And lots of companies made these third party parts. So whenever you find these original Cox parts, hey, it's a really happy thing. I find that it's a lot easier to put these back together and not lose any parts if I assemble what I can before putting it in the parts bin. As you see, I'm doing the same thing to make sure these screws don't take a trip. Now, to show you that this is an original Cox part, take a look. We're going to pull the brush back. See, it says Cox either side. These are kind of hard to replace. So when you find them, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Now we're going to get into kind of a pesky part. Now, my last restoration, I went all the way and I took the spring out of this assembly. And I'm not going to do it on this one because there is a lot of oxidation in this hole. There's normally a little tube that fits in here for the wheelie bar. And as you push on it, look at this. It is just not going to come out. It could do a lot of damage if you really, really force it. And another thing is if you take that spring out very often, it's difficult to get back into the right position. So I just try to work around this and leave it as is. Don't tickle the tail of the dragon. Let a sleeping dog lie. And now let's take another look between the restored version and the rusty nightmare. <laughs> what was I thinking? You can even see the front wheels were painted on this version so we're going to have to spin that out and I'll show you how we do that with a drill. Now the front wheels are happily usually in pretty good shape even though they're 50 years old and I think it might be because they were at less tension for all that time. They seem to not fit on as tightly as the rear wheels. Hey look we have a full bearing set here that's great news and we have the original front suspension member. I remember back in the 60s, I owned a couple of these uh, Cox slot cars. I owned the Chaparral and the Cheetah. And I very fondly remember swapping out the parts of those different cars and also the hop-ups. And you would end up with something like this. You'd end up with some flared axles and some flat axles like these. And I'm not sure these were sold on the original car that way. They might have been because there was constant change in the Cox lineup. Well, episode two will be body disassembly coming up. As we go from blue bomb to gorgeous, we will go boldly forward, hopefully with you. Subscribe now and we'll catch you next time.